this is Ed and I did my first uh, solar panel install on top of a Mallard M185 and I'll like to go ahead and show how I did the actual install and uh, where I routed all the cables and everything so uh, this should be uh, pretty awesome okay so from getting up here on the roof of the uh, Mallard M185 so we have the uh, the top of the, uh, the the fridge over here the uh, the vent for the uh, for the bathroom and then that is the actually the um, the black uh, vent over there. I actually added the Camco. Uh, uh, <laughs> I forgot the actual name of the product. I'll go ahead and add a link on there. But uh, basically, what it does is it actually pulls the uh, the vent gases out, out of the uh, out of the tank, and you can actually you can see with the uh, with the wind, it actually it, it turns towards it, so it creates a venturi effect and actually pulls the gases out. It's pretty cool. It's really actually really easy to install. Uh, and then, so what I actually did was I have managed to find. I'll, I'll show you how how I actually found. Uh, figure all this information out but here's the obviously the air conditioner there's the uh, antenna um, and then, so this is the uh, the gray vent uh, and then what I basically did was just uh, a couple inches over to the, to the right of the gray vent uh, I determined uh, where everything was and like I said I'll show you uh, from, from down, down inside and I had to basically drill a big hole you know, in, in, into the roof which does sound uh, rather scary uh, and basically install this this uh, this flange unit here uh, but what I did was I actually uh, ran the, uh, these two lines down below, uh, and then what I have is the, uh, the actual back of the solar panel that I actually have installed here. The solar panels actually come with these cool uh, RC, uh, sorry, AMC4 uh, connectors, and so you basically can't screw up the, uh, the power. And so that's what these guys look like. Okay, and so what I did was I actually put these little splitters on here so that once I actually mount the, uh, the solar panel onto the roof, um, I, I can basically uh, have a single line up here. And I can I can easily uh, spider off and add another panel on here without without any problems. The panel itself is a uh, Reynolds uh, solar panel, and then it has the Reynolds mounts. And I'm using Silk Flex, so I can basically mount it straight onto the uh, actual roof. So there's this is a no drill uh, mount solution, and it is rather solid. It is not moving anywhere. I mounted this. Uh, about 12 hours ago, this is not going anywhere, and also uh, because this, you know, this is also the, obviously my first install, trying to figure out how to do this, and I, I actually put it directly behind the uh, the air conditioner unit. It has enough clearance to be able to uh, do what it needs, it has enough breathing room and everything like that, and also while we're driving down the road, the air conditioner actually creates a slightly slight windshield and everything uh, for it as well. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know. I'm confident enough that in this uh, this mounting technology that I can go ahead and drop another one over here, put another one up towards the front. Um, but the thing about this is, because the way the roof is actually slightly curved, you can't mount it horizontally. You have to mount it vertically. The reason why is because these mount points over on the, on the edges on the, on the sides here, you can't use these if you mount it horizontally. You can only use the corner mounts, which means you have less mount surface. So. Um, I'll go ahead and go down back downstairs down below and actually show how I actually round, uh, routed all the wiring and so you can see uh, how I got to the conclusion of where uh, to actually drill this particular hole and uh, it really wasn't that bad of an install to be honest okay so this is actually uh, where I d uh, did the install for the um, charge controller and where, where I ran all the cabling and everything so I'll just a real quick uh, show you before I get down into the weeds this is the uh, Reynolds G Adventure uh, solar charge controller. I, uh, there's a lot of sol solar charge controllers uh, out on the market, but uh, I really like this this particular one because this is actually a flush mount design. So look how clean this is. A lot of the other ones, they basically will have a, a mount design where you actually have the uh, the actual screw holes and you actually have the, the wires actually hanging out and then you actually have to tuck the wires, uh, which is a really ugly looking design. And this is the only one I really found that, uh, that actually is a flush mount design uh, that is is, is really elegant um, plus it also has a USB port on the front so you can actually charge directly uh, your your devices whatever and just plug a cable into this um, I also while I was testing with this I actually got this before I got my solar panel and it does pull the power from the battery does you don't have to have the solar in order for the for this port to work it does have a rotating display so you can get a lot of information about how the system is actually working um, I actually added this guy uh, last night. This is actually uh, set up so I can actually monitor the power draw from the battery. So I'm, I can monitor, use this to monitor the actual the ability to charge the actual battery. But this is also I'm uh, using this to monitor the actual draw from the battery. So this makes a kind of a perfect combination for uh, boondocking. So that way 
and I can monitor how our, my actual power utilization is actually running. So a couple of the things that I've also learned uh, while, while doing this particular, uh, this particular install, uh, the actual power monitor that I installed, I actually did, uh, did some math last night and everything. Um, with, without the solar panels actually uh, putting power back, back into the battery, I was able to actually measure everything inside the actual unit to be able to figure out what the actual draw of every single device was. And also, uh, with everything off, what the actual draw was. Because one of the things we actually did was we actually parked our camper at a particular location, let it sit there for about a week or two, and we found out that the battery died. Well, I was curious at what point was the battery d dead because we didn't have anything actually charging the battery for us uh, while it was sitting there. Because there's something actually drawing the power. And I discovered there was just a little bit of standby power being used from the from the radio, but there's also power being used from the uh, propane uh, leak detector down below. Not a whole lot. I actually measured last night. It's about uh, 0.21 amps uh, draw, so you know 211, uh, sorry 210 uh, milliamp uh, draw. But you know that cascade that over you know a week or two, it's going to draw the battery down. The actual overhead lights, for example draws about 1.14 amps. I'll go ahead and put a table up on the screen and uh, I'll go ahead and get that plus. So I'll also probably put a link down below and I'll have a, a blog link uh, that has all the uh, the power draw um, items down below so you guys can actually see what what each device while it's running uh, actually draws uh, from the actual battery so you can kind of get an idea. So real quick this is the Silk Flex, uh, so, uh, this is what I actually use to mount the actual solar panel uh, to the actual roof. So it's an elastic adhesive, so um, it is designed to still be uh, semi-pliable, semi but it is still an industrial grade uh, adhesive. Uh, it is a really awesome um, product. Uh, this is like 16 bucks off of Amazon. Uh, this is the box that the uh, solar charge controller uh, came in, and it comes with a uh, with this little insert that you can you can use for for mounting onto a, onto a board of some kind, uh, I did not utilize that. Uh, there's also a, a wire here for um, connect for basically getting a more accurate reading directly off the battery um, because of the undercarriage um, covering underneath the trailer. I was not able to actually do that, um, but I did do the uh, temperature sensor, which basically I just have an ambient sensor to basically kind of route down on the side, and I'll show you that as well. So what we'll do next is I'll go ahead and get in here into where the power panel is and show how the wiring is and show where the actual wires actually run and show why I put it where I did. So real quick before I actually uh, take the uh, take this all the way uh, uh, apart here, I actually added uh, one uh, circuit breaker to this. This is a 15 amp circuit breaker. Notice it's in the off position. And one reason for this is because um, when you take this off, there we go. You notice uh, on the underside here, this is the actual uh, charging pack for the uh, for the actual battery. They, they call it a, a power converter up to 55 amps. And this is actually how it charges the, the actual battery when you're on shore power. And so the black wire actually runs up in here, and I'm not going to touch it because it's live. But uh, what it does is it actually goes up in, in, in here, and uh, according to the label on here, it was actually going into the... It was going on to the general breaker so it was going on onto the uh, onto this bottom breaker here okay so what I what I what I did was I actually took the uh, took the wire there was two wire two black wires going into, into this general breaker and what I did was I shut off shut off the main disconnected that that wire um, clipped it and then brought it over onto a dedicated breaker and basically it, it's just a breaker it just slides right into place and the reason why I did this is because with a solar panel running on this, um, I can shut this breaker off, disable the uh, power converter here, so that way I'm only charging the batteries off of solar, which means I'm effectively, besides the air conditioner, I am boondocking while sitting on the driveway. So that way I get an idea of how the battery runs and how long um, I can last uh, and, and get a, a better feel for it. Also because the pulse width modulation is actually a bit better for the flooded batteries than just the standard um, 
power converter for uh, for charging anyways. Now, do I have to leave this off? No. The reason why is because this guy still detects the voltages, and he's going to shut off his his charging uh, rates based on the voltages anyways, and the solar charge controller is going to, usually going to take over at a slightly higher voltage anyways and every 28 days he's also going to do an equalization charge which this guy does not do so you could still run both you can have multiple power sources for charging the actual battery because they're voltage uh, sensitive and they're going to control based on that so i'll go ahead and take the other screws off here pull this off and i'll show you what's uh, what's actual behind this panel and show you how the other wiring runs all right, so before I slide this all the way out here, uh, that big, uh, big, uh, big red, red cable here on the right side, uh, down below, that's actually uh, straight from the uh, solar charge controller. So it was a big, uh, fat red cable that I happen to have. Uh, it's a slightly oversized, but you know, it's uh, it's all right, especially considering uh, I'm only running a hundred watt panel at at the moment. Um, but I will add a couple more uh, panels up onto the roof eventually. Uh, I have actually one more coming in today, but. Uh, um, it's, it's gonna be a slow process, you know. Uh, about 114 bucks a piece, and then about 30 dollars for the actual mount, and then uh, another uh, 15 bucks for the silk flex, uh, and then just connectorize the uh, uh, to add to add it in. Uh, but it's a pretty easy process to actually add in. Let me go ahead and slide this out. Okay, so this is the view directly behind the power box, and so what you have here is you have the. Uh, this is the 30 amp uh, line coming in. Uh, that's actually your cable cable line coming in. Um, and what's interesting here is um, if you find that the this little cutout here on the back, this is actually some high voltage lines. This yellow one is actually part of the uh, this is actually air conditioner feed, and it goes up the wall here. So this is this wall right here that's right next to the uh, right next to the table. And then what happens here is here is a vent pipe. This is for the gray tank. And you notice you see that beam sitting right there. And so what I basically determined is, wait a second, here's this wire, here's the tube. And so when looking on at this, there's a thermostat, so which means there's the wire that runs down from the thermostat. And then I also determined there's the beam. And there's also a staple line right here. So I was able to determine this is where the beam is. The reason why there's a beam here, and it's also hollow up here, the beam is here to support the weight of this top bunk. So what I did was I just cut a small a small hole over to the side, and then basically I slightly expanded it using a a big razor cutter, a box cutter, and expanded that that hole. And then I was able to slide in and get to get to get to this point. And then basically using the, the pipe that's on the other side here, I was able to use that as my marker point, my navigational point, when I went up and then basically drilled a hole in the top. Um, I had to make a hole about maybe the, the size of a, of a half dollar um, in order to be able to get the end of the drill in. But the actual, uh, I was it was two holes. They were, uh, what, half inch in size in order to be able to get the, um, in order to be able to get the actual cables in. The problem is it's, 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 a, it's rubber, wood, big thick uh, foam and then there's a metal sheet of some kind and then there's some more wood underneath and then underneath that there's actually another wood beam of some kind so you have to get through a, a, a big thick layer of stuff before you actually get into this little cavity then once you do it just a straight shot right down to the charge controller and then i was able to to get the cables directly into here I, I cut out that other little hole where you saw the cables running in, and then that's where the where the wires go from this for the battery down in down below. Down below, there's also a there's a, a, a negative bus, so there is there's a spare line. So I was able to run. Let me see if we get a better view of that. So I was able to just run a uh, run that straight into the to the edge oh, over on the side that red one with the uh, with the black wire with the black tape on it because I didn't have any. Uh, black cable that's actually the the, the negative uh, for the solar and then that little shut right there what i actually did was i took the negative uh, uh from the battery there it goes that's the one going back down that way um just uh, pulled it off of that uh, that bar added the shunt and then ran this cable back up the wall and that's how i actually added my little monitor that's the little access port i cut out for the cabling going up to my uh, solar charge controller and to my actual monitor 
Um, the other thing that's interesting is because of that little access hole that's over there, there's one other thing that I've, that I've also discovered. If I wanted to add something else over here, for example, an amateur radio station of some kind, this small little space that's over here that doesn't seem like there's anything here actually is usable. So it's a small, there's a staple, one staple holding this, and then it's just a, it's just a really kind of a goofy little setup that's actually holding it in place. But if I grab this one staple, come on. Okay, sorry about that. So there is actually just a single staple, but it's on the left-hand side, and just it's, it's kind of creative how they actually kind of mounted this in here. But uh, sorry, a little, a little pantry here, full of stuff. So what's actually behind here is here's the uh, here's the, the line for the air conditioner, and it just goes into a little service junction box. It doesn't go to the outside. It just goes into this little service junction box, and it spiders out right here tucks up in here that's actually part of the installation and then it just goes up up in this way i believe the reason why they did that is because there's actually another part of a little servant little support beam here part of the actual framework and so from right here it just goes over and that's actually how it support supplies power to the uh to the air conditioner but it creates this this extra little space up here so if i needed to there's also a 12 volt line for the for the light up here um, but what I can do is I can run another, like another 12 volt line up to here, bring it down into the uh, into the power panel uh, on a fuse. I can modify this little panel right here, and I can go ahead and mount a, an amateur radio station right here, possibly, and then figure out a way to uh, to get an antenna mounted up right there. So ideas, anyways, that way it wouldn't take up any more space. So. But monitoring this uh, during the daytime, the way this is set up, again, my uh, um, power converter is uh, is off right now, and solar is just starting to uh, to supply power. The sun is just starting to come up. I'm only supplying about uh, about uh, you know 0.2 amps, but uh, it's it is showing the actual draw from the battery still. Um, the actual lights overhead draws about. Uh, draws about 1.1, 1.2, but there's also a little bit of a phantom power. For, it's actually not phantom power. It's about 0.2 amps from the uh, from the uh, RV uh, LP gas uh, leak detector. But the reason why that math doesn't add up is because the solar is actually feeding, supplying us, uh, just a little bit of that power. So that's working out pretty nicely. Okay, and so that is how I added solar to the Mallard M185. Uh, unit as well as some uh, power monitoring uh, functions on here. Uh, I was able to run the overhead lights uh, all night long uh, and by morning time the uh, this single single solar panel 100 watts basically it was by around ooh, maybe 12 one o'clock with full daylight summertime sun um, basically brought the, the, the battery back to a full charge so um, I think I used probably about maybe half of the actual battery by just leaving the overhead lights on and that was about uh, based on the math, 1.3 amp draw, uh, basically uh, all night long from about uh, 8 p.m. all the way till about uh, 7 a.m. before the sun actually started putting a power back, a power charge back onto the actual battery. So, um, that kind of gives you an idea of what the actual power draw is. Again, I'll go ahead and post a link down below, uh, listing out uh, all the power usages uh, that I've discovered uh, for the system and everything. So, uh, um, happy camping.